Okay, yeah, I just thought I would uh, help get some help shooting a quick video to show my separate setup since I, uh, when I built it, I didn't know how to do it, and I was fortunate enough to find one video online by a very nice English gentleman that I thought more info might be helpful to others. It's located in the back of a horse corral. This was set up in an old chicken coop, and the reason we set it up was because we were having a number of people for the eclipse and there were no um, porta potties to be had. So we had to come up with something. So I built this out of an old chicken coop. The doors, this is the normal way we would use it. There's also the ability to open both sides just for access. And the basic um, structure is a privy setup purchased from separate-usa.com, which consists of a styrofoam seat, which is very comfortable, a lid to keep it sealed so that the fan that exhausts from the um, uh, bucket compartment can operate correctly. And the use is very intuitive. You just sit, liquids go forward, and solids go into the back. When you're finished, you can spritz out, if you wish to, the front compartment with some vinegar, which helps to neutralize odors, not that there are any. And toilet paper can be tossed in the back. From Pinterest, I got the idea for this little compartment which was not my invention. Somebody else came up with this, but I have a toilet paper roll and I found an old bolt to put it on. Uh, in here we store toilet paper, compostable bags. We do not compost our waste, however, it goes in the trash. But these fit a five gallon bucket. I found these online. Some Lysol wipes for wiping up if you wish to. And uh, my own addition, a little bit of um, horse stall neutralizer, which uh, for anybody that really cares to be fastidious, they can sprinkle in the back compartment to help absorb moisture. But the way this operates is liquids go into the front compartment of the separate. You can see it better like this. And down a tube, which is visible here, that comes along with the unit, this black tube. And that black tube actually exits uh, underneath this dirt floor building into a pit that I dug that's two feet by three feet by two feet deep. It doesn't need to be nearly so big, but the tools I was using kind of required um, that much space in order to get deep. Then it's filled with rocks and some landscape fabric is set up on top of those rocks and then dirt um, covers the top completely. So it's absolutely invisible. Urine is basically sterile and um, when it goes down that tube and exits into what's called a French drain, um, it just gradually soaks away into the soil. Underneath, I have a compartment where the solids drop into a bucket. This compartment is as sealed as it can be with, you know, minor cracks around the uh, door. It's, um, this is the five gallon bucket. All it has is some toilet paper in it right now. And it's lined with a double layer of these compostable bags because they're not super strong. And if you look inside, you can see a little computer fan. And I'll show you that it is pulling air very efficiently out through a uh, PVC pipe that exits the wall and then goes up at a 90 degree bend on the, on, in my case on the exterior of the building and we can go out and show that to you now. This bucket goes back inside and I have some wood placed so that when you push it up against those uh, wood bumpers, it winds up being exactly centered underneath the separate. 
The floor of the building here is pea gravel, and underneath is hardware cloth, and below that is dirt. And the reason I put hardware cloth in is I wanted to make absolutely sure that this building would be rodent free, nothing would dig in. This could be locked if you really wanted to. I also want to show you another few things before we go outside. I have a little trash can here. This would be for paper towels if you wanted to use them to wipe up and, and uh, prevent filling up that bucket too quickly with paper towels. I have instructions for this apparatus here on the wall. It's very simple. It's very intuitive. Unlike uh, another uh, waterless toilet we have called the Incinolet, which incinerates waste, um, this one doesn't require any kind of a special liner every time you use it. So um, in this event that we had during the eclipse when 30 people were using this, it was very intuitive. Nobody had any trouble with figuring out how it worked. Over here in the other corner, we have an old um, cheap plastic laundry sink that we set up just because it was the easiest thing to do with a gallon, a seven gallon uh, water container here that you can turn on when it's full of water and use to wash your hands. It's somewhat empty right now. And we have soap here, and when you're done washing, we have some towels over here. And one idea that we saw this uh, other separate um, privy installer use was when you're done washing your hands, you can dump that water, that soapy water, right down the front of the separate. And that will help to dilute whatever is in your uh, drain pit. We have a shelf with hand sanitizer and some other items that we thought might be handy. Inside this old chicken coop, I built windows with screens and shutters to keep air circulation going. But the separate is truly odorless. And I read a lot of reviews before. I really felt I could believe that. And in our experience, it's true. So long as that fan is running constantly, which it does. And in my case, we we're able to get an electrician to put power out here and hardwire this computer fan into the wall. You can also run it on a 12 volt battery. You could have it um, powered by solar energy. Um, we have some lights and some little additions to make it as pleasant as we possibly could. Outside here, you can see the more of how this was built uh, with shutters to keep airflow going or to lock it down during the winter. And they're sort of self propping there. And then here's my PVC pipe. This was just a six foot length of, I believe it's um, two inch interior diameter pipe that I found at a hardware store. It could be any diameter you want, I suppose, so long as you have a fan that's strong enough to pull uh, a good flow of air all the time. And what that does is it desiccates the solids down to, they say, a fifth of their volume. Um, for disposal, there is something called the humanure movement, and you can, you can compost um, the solids, but that's uh, a, a specialized deal. You really need to look into it and study it to make sure you do it safely. And uh, we don't do that. We simply bag, the, uh, bag up those desiccated solids and put them in the trash, just as you would a diaper. Out the top, we have a little rain cap. And whenever you install a pipe like this outdoors, it's very, very important to put some hardware cloth over the top because there are certain types of birds that will try to nest in there and they'll get stuck and die. In the back, this is where the drain pit is for the liquids and totally invisible. As I said, it's a just a pit. The tube drains into it. It's filled with rocks. There's some landscape fabric on top and then it's covered with dirt and whatever else you want. So that's the tour.